G'day. This week <laughs> I'm running between the, uh, the rainfall, but it is autumn. This week, yeah, I want to talk about um, if money were no object. Now I know that's a kind of a strange thing. If money were no object for travel, you probably wouldn't be caravanning. But then again, you might. And if you did, you'd probably have a uh, whiz bang caravan. It's not the caravans I'm talking about today. It's more the little things that you can put on them, the little toys, the little adjustments, the uh, refineries. And don't forget, money's no object. So I just want to tell you about it. These are the things that I would have. So uh, let's go check them out. I would almost definitely change the gas cylinders there for the new sexy ones that are made out of a special composite material. They're lighter, you can see what's happening in the gas cylinder and all up there, uh, I think they're just a better unit. And the only catch is you do have to refill them, but I'm sure that's the least of the problems. Another thing I would change straight away would be the classic jockey wheel. I replaced that with a remote control electronic one that sat in the drawbar and just press the button, up she goes or down she goes. Absolutely beautiful. I'm pretty sure all of us are big on security. This is the, uh, we can call it the poor man's, but it's certainly the budget version of locking up the uh, jockey wheel. But they do make a better model than this where you put it in and any movement on the van, a little alarm goes off and um, it also locks up the wheels. So <laughs> that makes it pretty hard to move a caravan. Since the caravan is pretty expensive to buy, you really don't want it to be wandering off in the West. And there is a massive amount of, uh, you're not gonna believe the statistics of how many caravans are stolen in Australia every year. <laughs> Classic reversing camera. Now I've got mine wired up so that uh, it's on all the time that I'm driving and when I'm parking as well. So I don't have to flick in reverse or anything like that. It's just showing me on a screen inside the cabin and I can see sort of what's behind me and a little bit to uh, either side of the caravan, which is great. I definitely recommend that. I know what you're asking. Why have you got two? Well, a sponsor wanted me to review one of their um, systems and unfortunately it's a wireless system and in my case it really just did not work at all so I've still got it stuck on the caravan still trying to get the wireless section to work. Great idea, just never really worked, not for me. Again, if money were no object I'd replace uh, these little holders there's some really, really sexy units that are available. And I'll replace that with uh, two either, one either side of the van. Now you can either pop water in there or you can pop diesel or fuel. Uh, my preference would probably be to have one water and one diesel. They're a great idea. And as I said, they make some really, really nice uh, units that are lockable and also means that I think the ones I've seen don't actually have to lift this out. You can pour the water out from here, which is a great design. Now this next feature, you may actually have to have it already in the caravan, but if you could modify it, I'd have it modified. Basically what it is, is there's a uh, little section here on the caravan and it's got a built-in pump. So what you do is you pull it out, you put your hose extension, run it down to the creek, and then just flick a switch. And what happens is the water pumps up and then pumps into your designated uh, water tank. I guess it's probably gonna go into the, the uh, grey water maybe just for uh, washing the clothes but if you're a gambling person you could always filter it and uh, put it in your water if you're really stuck. Now the next topic I want to talk about is a little bit delicate. Americans call it the bathroom, Australians call it the toilet or the dunny. <laughs> uh, what I would do is straight away if money were no object I'd replace the whole system with a compostable toilet. Now uh, they work basically in a completely different system. You buy little briquettes from the uh, hardware store, 
break them up, drop them into this particular compostable toilet, twirl around the handle a couple of times, and that's it. And uh, no more smells, and because it all does what it does, you can actually, at the end of a period of time, which is typically six weeks minimum, up to a couple of months or even three months, depending on the usage, um, you can actually take the, the used part and drop it in any rubbish bin because it's not going to have any smell, it's not going to have anything to view or to look at. So uh, that's the first thing I would do. Now, if um, the other thing I might still think about putting on is a SOG, S-O-G. You have to drill the bit, and well, obviously I wouldn't if money were no object. I'd get someone to do it for me <laughs> and put in the SOG thing. So basically what the SOG does is like a little fan system and it's working so it sucks the uh, any smells in the caravan it also allows extra oxygen so what that does is decomposes the material in the um, in the canister and uh, yeah apparently it's supposed to be brilliant so if you've got someone really delicate and even even if you don't pop one in beautiful so that's the old SOG system Now those who know me will understand I'm a wheels man. So the first thing I would change on the caravan would be the wheels. I'd change the four wheels on the dual axle and also the spare and I'd marry them up to be the same as the tow vehicle. Now that may or may not be possible but that's certainly an ideal situation. So for instance if you've got 17s on the tow vehicle and 17s on the caravan you're already looking good. You've just got to make certain that the uh, offset of the wheels on the car are the same as the ones on the caravan. All sounds a little bit technical, so don't just rush off and get some wheels. Make certain you've got some uh, professional advice. The other thing is, I would put my uh, favorite all-terrain tires on it. Uh, would, I would not put muddies, but my all-terrains, and uh, then I'm ready and set to go. If money were no object, yet again, I would have that roof covered with solar panels. I don't really think you can go overboard. So I'd get the uh, biggest solar panels, best quality, and uh, get my man, whoever that'll be, sort that out. So I've got lots of solar panels on the top. It's then coming down through uh, my favourite, which is the Victron Bluetooth uh, MPPT controller. I think mine's 100 slash 50. It'll take 50 amps coming through. And solar coming down. And then the next one is the batteries. If I had loads of money, straight away I'd go down and uh, modify my drawbar, put on a uh, box that had a sliding uh, mechanism which had my generator on. Now the generator, I know some people say, oh, I don't want a generator. Believe me, you've got loads of money, you will want it. You will use it a bit, especially if you're just out in the middle of the bush, the batteries are getting low, start up the generator, beautiful. And I'd get a uh, 2kV and I'd either get a Yamaha or a uh, Honda, they're both really quiet. I wouldn't get any more than 2kV because they'd be heavy, it's too heavy to lift. And if I really just sort of thought, oh, you know what, I'll just get a little one just because, then I'd get a little uh, Yamaha 100. But I'd have that and that would set me right and I could just pull out the drawer on the generator, start her up, pop her back in, beautiful. The other thing is batteries, lithium batteries I'd have, and uh, I'd be spending the money on either uh, three 200s, which would give me 600, or maybe if I really wanted to go absolutely crazy, I'd go three 300s, which would give me 900 amp hours. I know weight's a bit of an issue, and that would put a fair bit of weight on it, but I'll tell you what you would have... <laughs> You'd have electricity forever. There really would be a major, major difference. So I think the ideal really sort of for these days is probably 400 amp hours, which would be, might be two 200s, or um, 600 would be pretty good, but certainly 900 would just be out of the oh, It would just be so good. An integral part of your electrical system this is the person with money, loads of money, <laughs> would be uh, an inverter. Now the inverter I love the most, I've already got it set up in the caravan and that's set up in such a way that 
I don't have to flick any inverter switches or anything. I can just plug in the uh, toaster, put down the bread, it cooks, it just gets on with it. So I've got 240 volt, sort of whenever I want it, so long as the batteries are up. But I've already told you about my dream about the batteries, loads of money. The, uh, the one I reckon that you should get if you've got that sort of cash would be a, a Victron 3000. So it's a 12 volt 3000 with a 120 amp charger built in. That means if you've got shore power, you can plug into the uh, inverter just to charge up the batteries and 120 amps coming in, woohoo! Now that 120 amp might have to be uh, whittled back if you don't have enough battery. That's all a very complicated issue. You'd have to talk to a uh, Sparky. There is a rule for it. But uh, yeah, that inverter and then have it converted over into the van. So you don't have to flick any switches. You've got your massive amount of uh, lithium batteries and you've got your really powerful smart, uh, Victron Smart, Smart 2 I think it's called. And uh, that would just be, again, the dream. <music> Now, I'm sure Elon Musk doesn't need me to advertise his product, but we all know the Starlink. Uh, I would race out and get one if I haven't already got one. And I would get the mobile one that I can put on pause anytime I want. And uh, if Juan did have that insurmountable sort of money, I'm pretty sure I've seen this on the track out in the, when I've been traveling. There's a little connector you can have uh, set up on the caravan somewhere where you can actually because this this router has to be in the caravan this cable has to come from the router outside to the dish now uh, the only way to do that is either to put it in the door and jam it in the door and eventually you're going to damage that cable or drill some sort of a hole or find a, some sort of a cavity in the caravan that you can run in it's probably going to be in the bottom of the caravan and you climb under there that's a bit of a pain but I'm sure I've seen this little doodad you can uh, have fitted to the caravan so what that means is inside that's fine the outside where the dish is all you do is you just plug this into the wall of the outside of the caravan run your uh, dish over there and you're all done it's just so much better than having to do all that other mucking around so go and buy one of those and have it fitted professionally fitted Ooh. I've nearly finished my absolute ultimate with my loads of money converting out of the caravan. The rains are coming again. So here's a couple of quick ones. Uh, if for some reason on your new caravan or if you've got a second hand caravan, you've got a 50 mil decoupling, I'd get rid of it straight away and I'd put it on a D35. Now D35 I think is a quite a lot safer. D35 is a smaller van. D45 for a bigger van. You can get a couple of other different, different couplings, but they're the ones I like. So that means that the caravan can go like that, and it can go like that. And in an extreme situation, allegedly, if the caravan rolls, the car doesn't necessarily roll with it. Uh, the other thing is, I would get a handyman to uh, cover all of the drainage underneath the caravan. Even brand new caravans don't, from what I've seen, don't tend to have that uh, that protection on the on the uh, PVC drainage and there's a couple of ways I've made a video on how to do that and do it yourself if you really wanted to so there are uh, a couple of last things now all the other stuff that I would want to talk about like I'd love to have a if I had the loads of money I'd like to have an outside kitchen you're usually going to get all of that done when you order your caravan so uh, and the other thing is I don't know whether you can do this on a new or a second-hand caravan but I would get rid of the three ways uh, three-way fridge and I'd put in a, um, I think they call it a, <laughs> always forgetting these names, it's, it's a type of fridge, it's basically 240 volt and uh, 12 volt, that's all it is, compression fridge or something like that. And uh, I'd get the biggest they make, and the brand I really like is called Bushman, pretty sure it's Bushman, and you can get one that's uh, really quite big, just like a home fridge, little stacks of room in there, nice big fat freezer, and uh, then you'd have the life of luxury. So go spend and enjoy that, uh, all those upgrades because you've got loads of money. Let's wrap it up. During the video, I gave you a couple of screen dumps. Now that was to give you an idea of what the product looked like. Also the exact name if you wanted to research some prices yourself and an indicative price of what the product is anyway. I've negotiated a uh, special deal for you guys and it's up to 15% on some of those products. So uh, all our details will be in the 
uh, description down below and also on my website www.paulwheeldrive.com so you might want to check that out they really are a good uh, a good price and that uh, special only lasts for three weeks so if you're going to do it you better get onto it now if you found the video helpful useful and or entertaining please give it a thumbs up if you think the video is worth sharing i would appreciate it until next time this is paul wheel drive signing off